All right, guys. Thank you guys for coming tonight to uh, experience um, uh, what it is to be a Linux man, uh, to kind of like see our model. Um, for those that don't know me, uh, my name is Ron Swarrow. I'm a senior here at St. John's University. I'm a chemistry major, um, and I am uh, a graduate of St. Benedict's Prep 2012. Um, so uh, I'm also with a lot of other Benedict's guys here. Um, just to, I'm not gonna keep you guys too long, I'm gonna start the film, but just to give you a sense of what the film is. Um, so the rural documentary is based on my high school, and basically uh, it's a monastery, uh, North Abbey, and an institution, a school, uh, St. Benedict's Prep, and they come together to create this model for inner city kids. Uh, typically targeting uh, African American males, um, young males, uh, Latino males as well, um, and coming from low income families. Um, we're able to uh, create a model where we can uh, have them go through four years uh, to see education success. So uh, ho hopefully you guys um, can learn a lot from this film. Okay, uh, it's a powerful piece, uh, and you guys will see how, why we talk about it so much and why we praise it so much. Um, you guys probably saw it recently from 60 Minutes. Uh, we had national exposure there. Um, this film also was selected this year in the White House for the Educational Reform Initiative film. So we have that as well. Um, and we also have, we're blessed to have Champ Sanchez, which is somewhere around here, um, the keynote speaker, who is a graduate of uh, St. Benedict's Prep in 2009. Okay, so we're blessed to have him as well uh, to give a message. So, without further ado, I'm going to put in the film and enjoy. Oh, that was a lot to take in. A lot to take in. Um, yeah, so this is where I come from. Um, this is St. Benedict's Prep, uh, this is North Abbey. Um, a lot of the story that you heard in here um, are true. Um, I'm a living testimony of it. Um, just to share my story a little bit. Uh, my mom raised me, single mother. I uh, didn't know my father until around 13 or 14 years old. 13, 14 years old. Um, this is emotional for me. It's emotional. Uh, and this is real. This is really real. Um, and I owe all to, to Benedict's. Um, the man I am today is because of my mom, because of Benedict's. It's good. <clears throat> sorry, guys, sorry. So, yeah, I owe it all. I owe it all. Um, being a leader, going beyond, call of duty. All because of Benedict's. It's all because of, all because of Benedict's. And I want to give back all the time. Service, that's, that's, that's me. You know, um, I continue to mentor like these guys, make sure they have the opportunities you know, that I had. You know, um, I didn't have a mentor, I didn't have an idol. I didn't have an idol growing up. I didn't have nobody. But my mom, Benedict, my brothers, of course. That's why I, I talk about it a lot. <clears throat> I talk about it a lot because I owe it all, I owe it all. I continue to go back, help out every year. Um, people don't know, you know? People think I got it good. <clears throat> I don't got it good. This is what it is. So um, before I go into Benedict's, you know, um, changed person, you know, I graduated and changed person. You know, um, and people always come to me, hey, you know, what you're doing is great, you know, it's all because of this, you know. I have a duty, you know, to give back. I have a duty to be a better person, you know. Um, and I owe it all to the school. So um, I'm not going to hold the time too much. Um, I really want to spend this time uh, for the next keynote speaker, um, Angel Sanchez, uh, Coach Champ, uh, we call him the People's Champ. Um, He's a graduate of St. Benedict's Prep 2009. Um, he then went off to uh, TCNJ uh, to get his uh, bachelor's um, in health science, I believe. Um, and now uh, has started a new job um, in Texas. Um, he's a motivational speaker, life coach. Um, he's an educator as well. Um, many hats, many hats. 
Uh, so I'm going to let him uh, do the talking, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, the movie shows you a lot, but it doesn't really show you at all. Um, these faces right here, these men that attended St. Benedict's, that's the movie. And what's so good about the movie that we created is never over. We can go on, we'll have our last breath, and there's gonna be a whole new group of Benedict's men marching throughout the world. I was just talking to one of the Benedict's men in the back, and I told him, it's going to get to a point where you don't even need a resume. You go into the job and come say, Ben, oh, we want him. Get him on the team. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the things that we have to go through to get out and, and, and graduate is intense. I'm Hispanic. I'm a Puerto Rican. Born and raised in North New Jersey. Yes, I got a lot of brothers and sisters and cousins and stuff like that, but I was the first person in my family to attend college and graduate from college. Everybody always asks me, like, man, you know, your mom and dad did a good job. You ask my mom and dad, did they do a good job? Yeah, we did okay. Who really did a good job? Father, Mr. Lamore. Um, people don't go to Benedict's because they want to go to Benedict's. I throw that out there right away. I necessarily did not want to go to Benedict's. Um, Father Edwin, he actually was the, uh, I met him when I was being the ring barrier to my godmother's uh, wedding, and he was the one that was doing the blessings. And um, Father Ed, he has this like iconic, he just, this something about Father Ed, that when I met him, I knew, like, I remember shaking his hand, and he just shook my hand tight, like, I'm trying to go. I mean, he's a, how you doing? Uh, nice to meet you, man. And um, I think it was uh, only four years after that where I went to high school. I went for a tour. I, I owed it to my um, godmother, like, okay, you, you know, I'll go check him out. And, um, you know, I didn't have the money to go to St. Benedict's, but somehow, some way, I was accepted St. Benedict's. And uh, it was a funny story. The reason why I wanted to put this in here, St. Benedict's had school 11 months um, in, in the year. So you're like, what about that, you know, one month? But um, I got accepted into Benedict's and was going through our overnight before I graduated from eighth grade. That year that I graduated, we had like some snow days, so the school was pushed back. But I literally went for my graduation, went out to eat, and I was back in the overnight, crying. Like, come on, I just graduated. I don't want to come back. Like, come on, give me some time. Um, but I put that out there, ladies and gentlemen, because we literally went into that school as little boys. Little boys. Thinking about little boy stuff. Doing a lot of little boys things. And now when we come out, cry like little boys because of what the school did to us. Um, it, it, it takes a, a special system in North New Jersey to really change men. A very special system. I have family members, friends, gang related, drugs, violence, you name it. Things that people see on TV, like, we lived that. It's nothing really different and strange to us. What's strange is the opposite, not having that. Walking outside and not hearing sirens. Walking outside and, and oh, whoa, you look a little different than I do. I'm actually from now, I, I live in Houston, Texas, and one thing that's big, difference is people actually want to know you. Like, hey, how you doing? We're we going to have dinner. You want to come on over? For real? I mean, I eat a lot. You got, all right, people are coming. In Newark, you look at somebody the wrong way, you want to fight. You got nice sneakers on. Oh, we like those sneakers. Oh, yeah, you do? Somebody's getting hit for these sneakers. Ladies and gentlemen, I start off with that just to like let you know the, the, the demographic and, and what we're really going through and what we now are. And now I think it's only right that um, I do the due diligence of uh, saying a prayer. So at this moment, ladies and gentlemen, please bow your head. Um, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this opportunity. Yes, this new day that you have blessed us with is an opportunity. And we thank you for allowing each and every one of us in this room to be a part of this new opportunity. Lord, we thank you even though we are sinners. We thank you even though we sin with our thoughts, with our words, with our actions, and somehow, some way, you still continue to love us. We give you praise, we give you thanks, and we ask that you make your presence in this room. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Now, I had to start off with that because honestly, I was going to start crying and tearing and I needed some spirit. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Coach Chan. I'm a motivational speaker. I'm a life coach. I'm an educator. I'm a youth mentor. But above all else, I'm a believer. And the reason why I say that is because I want to say the next breath. Everything that we've done will always go back to St. Benedict's Prep. And once again, because as the story is, you go into a boy, you come out a man, and when you come out, you, you don't come out. You just, you just step out, because we're always going back. Each and every year that we have the opportunity, we're always going back. And why? It's because of St. Benedict's. But there's things that people experience in St. Benedict's that if it wasn't because of St. Benedict's, we would have been hit, quote unquote. That means like, not good. And um, I think uh, that's a big reason why I'm here. Um, once again, in North New Jersey, now I'm in Houston, Texas, and when I went to St. Benedict's, I had a, like a 3.0, 3.2, 3.5, I hit a 3.7 one time. But I wasn't a good kid. Um, my sophomore year, we went into the Shanley. The Shanley was a gymnasium where we had in our convocation, and uh, there was locker rooms in the Shanley. And uh, in the Shanley, the locks don't got lock. I mean, the lockers don't got locks. I'm Hispanic. I'm Puerto Rican. I say that not to like put a bad note on Hispanic and Puerto Ricans. But once again, when you grow up in something, that's how you act and how we act. You rob people. And I'm a good student. Nobody gonna know it's me. And truth is, oh, nobody knew it was me. Um, I took a couple things. Um, I had a family, um, you know, my, my parents were always there for me. I had both of my parents. Um, I had a brother and I had two sisters, but I think, you know, my biggest thing was that I was the oldest in my family. And uh, my dad, he had to amputate a leg, and as much as my dad was there, you know, I was kind of like looked at as like that child, and you gotta do it, you gotta make it. And when I'm bracking in 3.5, I was like, Mom, check this out, I got 3.5. Okay, cool, get ready for dinner. What? I got kids who go to school, kids driving up in a new Beamer, looking all nice, looking all cool, and I'm getting my grades and I'm not getting none in return. But I was caught up in that mentality. I got caught at St. Leonard's Prep. I got caught stealing. It's a crazy story. I'm not going to tell you because I'm still mad about it. That's my little boy side of me. But I'm happy that it happened. I'm thankful that it happened. When it happened, I was not thankful. I had this opportunity. Uh, come back to St. Leonard's Prep or go to the local high school. For real? You gonna just, yeah, yeah, you can just go. Father Ed, Father Ed, I love Father Ed to death. If he was here, he would laugh at me. He would say so many crazy things. But I think one thing that he would say is that um, I had something in me. And um, ladies and gentlemen, when I was sitting in my, my house, I was suspended for a week, and I'm thinking St. Benedict's, all boys school, gotta wear uniforms. Their baseball team is, eh, I'm a baseball guy. Puerto Ricans in our blood. And on the other side, the the girls and this and that. I'm going east side. I'm going to North East Side. That's the public high school. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I want to bring up this um, this scenario is because this is what Benedict's men are used to and what Benedict's men are not used to. When we go to our school, the door is open. Boom, boom. Red Jet, what's up? Door is open again. Door, another door is open. Another door is open. I can go all the way through my class without having to pass a metal detector. And to let y'all know. In Newark, that ain't something that you used to. So when I went to Newark High School, the first thing, Newark East Side, the first thing I had to do was go through a metal detector. I was kind of shook out. But it's okay, it's just a metal detector. I see some girls, and I made a good decision. I made a good decision. I remember when the baseball coach came up, I came by, and he was talking to my mom, oh, no, 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 we got him, he's in good hands. We understand what he did, but, you know, he, he's going to learn from it. We're going to take good care of him. My mom said, oh, thank you, but he's not playing baseball. Dang. I made a bad decision here. I remember, again, we had to go through another metal detector to, to get my schedule. Another metal detector? I remember people, it was like a fight that just busted out. A guy versus a guy. Now, granted, in Benedict's, with men, people are going to fight. But the reason they was fighting over? Stupidity. On that day, I got real close to going to North Public High School, and um, I turned it down. And the primary reason why I turned it down is because my mom, my dad, even my godmother, who was a big reason why I came to St. Benedict's, 
I could see in their eyes that they were disappointed. Very disappointed. And it kind of, once again, having something inside of you when you're the oldest in your family and everybody has so much, so much, you got it, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. And when you see them looking at you one day like this, and then the next day they look at you like, and then another day it's like, they change you up. Man. I went back to St. Benedict's and I was part of that Velvet Road program that uh, you guys saw. And uh, one thing that I want to address to you, a reason why people from Velvet Road, sometimes they make it, sometimes they don't. Because when you're in there, the first thing, when you go through that little circle group, the first thing you got to say is why I'm in there. Not your name. Not, ah, hi, my name is Chris. Hi, my name is Michael. No, no, no. Chris, why are you in here? For me, I'm a thief and I'm a liar. My name is Chan. There is nothing that breaks you more than to tell somebody that you're a thief and a liar. Nothing more heartbroken. I mean, it, it, it's, it's just painful. And the thing about it, Mr. Lamore and these crazy people in St. Benedict's, they don't invite new people on purpose. Like, why you invite this lady? You know, this guy, he's a, he, maybe he can help me out. If I'm a, if I'm a thief, he's not going to help me out anymore. Why do we gotta always do this? But ladies and gentlemen, the reason I bring up that story is because just because kids fail, it does not make them a failure. I repeat, just because kids fail, it does not make them a failure. Kids in Benedict fail every single day, and they still graduate. They can get into fight and still graduate. They can steal. Hey, I'm here. I stole something. I'm a thief. I'm a liar because I lied about it when I was presenting. Oh, did you take that? It wasn't me. And I still graduated out of Benedict. And on top of that, I got a scholarship to go to college. And on top of that, I graduated out of college. Now my sister is going to college, and she's going to graduate. She's going to be way better than me. Samantha, I love you. But ladies and gentlemen, the biggest thing that I wanted to provide you with this night, with this, with this speech, is that we're ordinary men. But that system is actually ordinary. That system is actually ordinary. I mean, there's times that we went home, and I can count for each and every one of these men. I don't want to go back to Benedict's. And then you hear in your head, Benedict's ain't so wet. Dang. Gotta go again. Ladies and gentlemen, these men up here, they're men. They're Benedict's men. You can size them up, give them a questionnaire, evaluate them. We're different than any other men in this world. And it's not something that we want to, like, you know, separate them out. Like, no, 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 no. Just like the movie, we want to connect with as many men and ladies that we can to give light upon the system that changed each and every one of us. Man, if, if we could, we would give everything back to Benedict's. But as we're experiencing, now we're men and we kind of got to hold our own. We got to pay our bills. We got to do this. We got to do that. And there's times that we just can't get back. But when Benedict's men put up an event just like this, this is the opportunity for where we can give back. This school changed our lives. And this school, honestly, gave us a new life. It gave us new family. It gave us new brothers. And you can go anywhere in the world, and I guarantee you'll meet a Benedict's man. North New Jersey, I traveled to Houston, Texas. Hey, one Minnesota, okay. As soon as I got out of the door, a Benedict's man was waiting for me. And I mean, like, yo, when we don't see each other for a long time, it's crazy. Yo, what's up? You know, you're at the airport. You know, you can't stop the car. I don't care about that, yo! What's up, man? Come on in! It's crazy, Riyad, I love you. It's crazy the emotion that we had, but because we all went through something so crazy that it made us this crazy. A beautiful crazy. Very nice. Very successful. Well-polished. Organized. Thoughtful. But more importantly, leaders. Wherever you go and you put these men in, I guarantee you they'll lead the group. Some of them do it without talking. They don't want to be verbal. Let me just hand them my biz and we'll do this. Some do it talking. Talk a lot. But each and every one of these men are leaders. And that's because of St. Benedict's Prep. There's a big thing that's going on in North New Jersey. And unfortunately, man, it's scary. Kids are getting influenced by the wrong things. A lot of kids are scared to go to St. Benedict's. They're scared to be around all boys. Ah. Why? It's okay. I mean, after 3 o'clock, you're going to think, right? Yeah, you're going to talk. Okay. 
They're scared to wear black hoodies? It looks corny, I guess. Yeah, it looks corny. I tell you, when you wake up at 6.55, you gotta be at school at 7. It's cool. I'm a black hoodie. What's up? I'm here. It's cool. It's cool. There's a positive to it. But I think one of the scariest components of people who don't go to St. Benedict's and want to go to St. Benedict's or are interested about St. Benedict's, they don't know these men. Ladies, I appreciate, and I say ladies, I, I'm not forgetting the guys, but ladies, I appreciate you taking time to watch this. Because honestly, as much as, you know, men, oh my God, men, 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 it's just not good men in this life. We got a couple. We got a couple of good guys, you know? Gentlemen, you don't even have to go to Benedict's to, to love it. You don't have to go to Benedict's to, to be a part of it. But now that you know what it's all about, share it. Because truth be told, there's somebody out there, there's a boy out there who needs St. Benedict, and he would have never found it if it wasn't for you. There's a lot of great things that I'm a part of now, and, and I saved that for the last because it's not about me. It's about these men. It's about the boys that are about to graduate this year. It's about the class coming up. It's about the younger generation. It's not about us. But I would never be in the position that I am today if it wasn't for St. Benedict's. I live, my own, live on my own in Houston, Texas, and I think that's crazy. But because of St. Benedict's, I'm good. I mean, I got friends like, you could cook? What? I could throw down. I mean, I could cook. Why? Because we went to overnight and I learned how to cook there, and I'm like, if I'm hungry, I can cook. I don't have to. I'm going to save some money. Yeah, I'm definitely going to cook this. And I say that because that's the only thing that St. Benedict has taught us. But ladies and gentlemen, it really taught us how to be a man, a man. But more importantly, it gave us a brotherhood and a family that you can't find anywhere else. I have family at home waiting for me, just waiting for that car. You coming? Okay, cool. But I got family right here. And it doesn't matter wherever I go, if I'm around a Benedict's man, we straight. We straight. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, this school that you saw is not just a school, man. It's a culture. It's a big pride that we have in everywhere we go. People look at us and say, something's different about you. What, what is it about you? What is it? To be honest with you, garden and gray, baby. Garden and gray. The school that we went to transformed our lives. And we are the people we are today because when we were younger, we literally had to stand up straight, put your shoulder against the wall, put your hand on somebody in front of you, sing these crazy songs that to this day, when you sing them, it's hot now. Before I was, come on, Garden the Gray, now Garden the Gray, hot. Put it on a mixtape, it's hot, I like it. Come on, I like, come on, why, why nobody did it yet? Maybe that's what we're gonna do, we'll talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 my name is Coach Champ, my real name is Angelo Sanchez. Um, I got the name Champ from my dad. My dad, he was uh, Hispanic, Puerto Rican, and uh, he wants to be a Major League Baseball player. He got this offer to become a Major League Baseball player. Unfortunately, he went to work one day because he was a good guy and just wanted to make sure that he finished his job. He was working at a factory, unloading, unloading, truck, cargo, to the dock, truck, cargo, to the dock. Hey, I'm good. And to this day, he turned around and he heard this sound that beep, beep, beep. And the truck driver had to get in reverse. Uh, long story short, I went back to my dad's leg, crushed his leg below the knee. And, um, and uh, my dad, you know, my dad was my dad. And you know, I don't know why, but whatever happened, it happened in that way. Um, My dad, he, he, he got into the accident that day, ladies and gentlemen, as you can imagine. Um, he never made it to the major leagues. And um, he called everybody in to say their final goodbyes. Everybody came in and said bye. Um, and uh, I was two years old at the time. I didn't know what was happening. I mean, I just haven't seen my dad for a long time. So when I came into the hospital, I just smiled and hugged him. And uh, my dad broke down, man. Um, my dad broke down and, you know, he said, you know, to this day, he looked at me, he found the motivation to live. And uh, when he looked at me, he called me champ. And um, to this day, the name has always stuck. 
Um, and, and what's funny about it is uh, when you're young, when you're young, two years old, somebody's calling you champ, it's a good thing for your ego, it's a good thing for your confidence. You walk around real tough and hot. I mean, I was always the shortest person in the room, but man, I felt it, you know? Was, That's calling me champ, I felt it. But I was arrogant. I was too young, loose cannon. St. Benedict's Prep, it geared me toward coach champ, the evolution of champ, I was like to say. Before I was very just dumb-minded and, and weak and just out of whack. And when you go to St. Benedict's and experience the things that some of these men experience, all of these men experience and the different programs, um, you come back different. And um, I just appreciate all y'all coming out. You have no idea how important it is for us, but more importantly, for the people who are not even seeing you watch this in North New Jersey. Because when you go home, you're going to say, hey, man, you know what school's in back? It's pretty awesome. And there's going to be, I guarantee it, and I don't you know we're not supposed to make guarantees. I guarantee in five years, within the five years, I'll give it even less. Within three years, you're going to cross the Benedict's man. You're going to remember this movie, and you're never going to see that guy the same way again. Because that guy went through everything that you're hearing and seeing. Gunshots, violence, sirens. We all went through that. And we all smile now because we conquered that. I thank you for giving us this time. I thank you for giving me this time. And more importantly, I thank you for you allowing these men. And we're going to have a question to answer. Please ask questions. And get serious. You know, to be serious. Hey, you know, what about this? What about that? But, um, and on behalf of St. Benedict's Prep, Father Ed, Dr. Scanlon, Mr. Lamore, and everybody out there, thank you. Thank you. this kind of power inside of me that I, I didn't realize was there before. 
Um, so I actually took it a little step further and just like some of the guys here, I actually decided to move into uh, the Leahy House. So I lived there myself for, for two years. Um, and that really kind of really sealed the deal for me in terms of saying, I'm serious, I'm, I'm invested, I want to make a change. The reason why I stayed actually is in this room right now. It's Franz and the guy right there. So sophomore year, my mom left my dad, and it was like the hardest time of my life. And I was like, oh, I got to go. I don't want to do this anymore. But Franz, being a big brother to me, looked at me. Uh, kept always pushing me. He's like, keep your grades up. You're a good kid. You can do this, you can do that. And I kind of followed in his footsteps. I was a counselor, group leader, came here. And then, actually, this year, two guys graduated that I know greatly. It was like my little brothers. And they told me, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have graduated. If it wasn't for Benedict, I wouldn't have graduated. And just staying there, just, just once. I'll be brother. Um, so on the second night of the overnight, when we started school, um, I ended up breaking my toe walking down the hall, like, walking around. Um, so I used that as an opportunity to leave. Like, I started crying, and like, uh, I got to my mom, like, I was like, they're, they're, they're making me do these crazy things, just walking down the hall, just yelling out. My father was like, you're gonna go back the next day. So right after the hospital, I spent the night. And then I went back, and Mr. Cassie said, um, do you wanna stay or do you wanna go home? And it was from then on that I, I, I made the decision to stay. Because something told me to that this is the place that you need to be, you need to experience this, and I stayed. And then from then on, it's just like I saw, I went through the overnight with a little boot. I still walked the halls, tried to walk the halls. <laughs> but, um, it was one of the experiences that from then on, I was like, this is the school for me, this is something that I'm never gonna find nowhere else, no other high school. Um, I guess. All right. <laughs> um, mine is. So one day that the you're talking about combo in the movie, and we had after school combo one day, and um, I walked in and like it was just the freshmen, so all the freshmen were on the floor, and I walked in and I had my shirt untucked under my hoodie, and Father Ed's like, "This is my third time you uh, seeing you with the shirt untucked. You're never going to be anything in life," and I'm like, "I'm not talking to you, not talking to you," <laughs> and so from that day on, me just being hard headed, I'm like, "All right, you know what?" I'm, I'm gonna do something with my life. I'm gonna, you know, be something. And so that's why I say, because he, in his own, you know, sadistic way, motivated me to be something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. Any questions? I have a question. Um, what kind of support systems are in place to help students after they graduate from the school? Wow. Each other. I mean, there's a lot. That, Benedict's is such an open door policy that we can go back there now today and say, hey, you know, we just lost our job, things are rough. All right, sit down, we'll talk to some people. I mean, the connection that Benedict's has is, I can't even describe it and explain it. Um, but the support system stems from the school itself. You can always go back, and there's always people who are on site that can help you. But I think the biggest support is each other, man. Um, you're gonna see these faces and probably like 20 years down the road one of us is gonna be this high-class businessman and the people that they hire is Benedict's man. Uh, the support system that's that's how big it is brotherhood is not just in school it's outside of school that you really see the dynamic of the support that you have one of the support things we're doing is like we either go back to like Christmas break a couple of groups uh, go I know Franz and I are like we go we talk the um, this year, the freshman class is graduating. I was their freshman leader, so I'm gonna go back to their graduation and actually kind of like walk them, um, rest to receive their diploma. I think um, some of the ways that we uh, come back together, like reunion-wise, um, we just call each other up, you know, uh, hey, let's go to this restaurant, uh, let's meet up, hey, call him, call him, you know. Um, so we, we try our best to uh, get together as much as possible. You know, when we go home, you know, uh, during breaks, especially if 
we are in college, you know, Christmas breaks, we get together, you know. Um, how I got this guy here, um, it was a reunion uh, that we had, like a networking day. Um, and I didn't know a champ was gonna be there, uh, but then I saw him, whatever. Um, and, you know, just hearing him speak and uh, seeing his videos that he posts every, every day, right, every morning. Um, <laughs> always pumped up, you know, uh, so, so he started to talk um, during, uh, and we was giving like a, you know, advice to the seniors in, you know, the class uh, that was graduating, and I was like, I gotta get this guy in Minnesota, um, and I was going to show the, the rule the second time anyway from the first time, um, because people, you know, love the rule, you know, the first time last semester, and I was like, okay, I want to do something different. You know, having the film directors last semester was awesome, you know, but having like someone come and like speak about, you know, um, Benedict and how it changed their life, you know, um, was another way of me connecting with him. You know, uh, I knew uh, Champ my freshman year, you know, coming in. Uh, I don't think none of these guys really knew him, but my freshman year, he was a senior. Um, so uh, I remember him from then, uh, but I saw him, I was like, him to Minnesota, and he probably thought I was just, you know, just talking and things like that, you know. Um, yeah, so um, so I came back and I started to talk to some people, uh, Nick Crowley in particular, um, he worked closely with me and getting uh, him here, um, and yeah, you know, things like that, you know, you never know who you come across, you know, conversations, you know, and he's emerging, you know, he wants to be a motivational speaker, like a big time motivational speaker, you know, and he's on that path, you know, and I want him to get this uh, new environment, you know, a new kind of like, uh, you know, audience, you know, that he's not used to, you know, um, so bring him here to uh, Minnesota and kind of like experience that and let you guys uh, hear his message was important, so that's another way we stay connected, so. Nice. Being so open and vulnerable, first of all, and for sharing your stories. So that it can be very difficult to do, and it's very powerful. Um, and then I'm just curious about if there are any similarities between Benedict's and CSBSJU that you see as being a student with both like monastic communities. Or is it unknown? <laughs> <laughs> I would I would definitely say um this this some. Um, it's, um, um, <laughs> uh, in terms of the monastic community, I would say, um, you know, building that relationship with, with monks, you know, having monks, you know, uh, my freshman year, sophomore year, having them um, on the halls, it was great, you know. Um, you build that same connection um, with Benedict, you know, uh, building relationships with, like, Father Al, you know, Father Edwin, as crazy as he is, um, Father Augustine, you know, and you get to just, um, spend time with him a lot, and I see that here too. You know, building relationships with, for example, Father Don here, and you know, like different people here. Um, you know, Brother Beach, and it's like it comes a long way. You know, um, so I would say in that aspect, that's how it's similar um, for me, in that community. Um, one other like obvious similarity, like they wear the same clothes. <laughs> 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 I, uh, like whenever I see like a monk walking out of like sexton or something, I think it's probably to like make a beeline for uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I guess for um, for me it was kind of still seeing a little bit of that, that brotherhood, especially with like my other Johnny friends. Um, and kind of still having that, that axis of just like going down to the end of the hall and saying like, Hey, what's going on guys? Like let's hang out together. So um, that's something that definitely did like carry for me, and that's something that kind of drew me here uh, to St. John's and also St. Ben's. So kind of seeing that a little bit when I was doing like my whole entire college search is something that that I kind of see still to this day. I think the community here, like close knit community, is what I thrived in in high school. So when I came in, like you said, like here it was it just it's close too, and. It's been addicting and all that, and it's people are nice. Sometimes it seems like they're too nice. <laughs> but I just love the mentality of uh, closeness and uh, thriving together. We're going to uh, wrap it up. I want to say thank you um, first to MDI, uh, Men's Development Institute, 
Ben, you are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nick Crawley uh, with the Benedictine Volunteer Corps. Thank you so much. Uh, right hand man with this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my the cam the cam woman. Thank you so much for recording this. <laughs> um, Champ, Champ for coming out here from Texas. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for sharing the stories. Anything that you know, um, I want you guys to leave here with was it the message in the, the film, um, you know, the speech from, from Champ, you know, uh, continue to spread the word and uh, treat others with care, you know, um, lead uh, with a purpose because um, it's important, you know, you never know who you will come across. Um, mentorship is a powerful thing, a powerful thing, um, and continue to, to do that, you know, with your family, um, with your friends, uh, whomever. Um, it's, it's, it's important, you know, to share that love around, okay, because you never know um, a, a person's story, you know, each one of us has um, unique stories, you never know until you get to know them, so. And uh, one more last note, I know I didn't add it in there, I kind of forgot, um, what you do for yourself dies with you, but what you do for others lives on forever, and it's not just saying, hey, go to the school, or hey, doing that, ladies and gentlemen, eat, and every day we have the opportunity to help somebody out. And if we don't, we really got to look at ourselves and ask why we live in this life. St. Benedict taught us that value. It taught us to be brothers to one another, care for one another, love one another. Yo, what you doing? You're not doing nothing? Come over. I got something we can do together. You don't got money? It's all right. I got you. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not just us that should be doing it. It should be this whole world. And it's that unselfishness, that brotherhood and sisterhood and familyhood that really created these these men, and when we walk in, people are like, we want them, we want them. But we want to share that with you and have you guys and girls really take that on. My dad smacked me. What you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for others lives off forever. And I don't want to smack you, but I wish by me screaming it a little bit, let me smack you up a little bit, just a little bit. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, what you do for yourself dies with you. What you do for others lives off forever. Okay. Um, also, lastly, before you guys go, uh, I want to now acknowledge some people in here. Uh, Marcus, Marcus, and Brian, Brian. Uh, thank you guys for uh, being courageous and um, going out and coming to our community. Uh, next year, they will be uh, they were selected as a Benedictine Volunteer Corps member, and they will be going to uh, St. Benedict's Prep um, to do a year. Nice. So, yeah. That's awesome.